Welcome back to the third video of the series, where we are building and managing an expense tracker web app using Firebase, React, and Next. If you didn't watch the first two videos, don't worry. We can jump right into this one without needing to go back to them. As a recap of the first video, we built a MVP for our expense tracker. We implemented functionality for a user to create an account and log in, as well as add, view, edit, and delete expenses. We did so using Firebase authentication, storage, and Firestore. And after building out all of that, we deployed our great web app to Firebase hosting so we can share it with our friends to use. In the second video, we improved upon that MVP and implemented optical character recognition, also known as OCR. This enabled users to just upload a receipt image without needing to type in every single field themselves for every single expense they want to add, since that could become really tedious. After uploading the receipt, they'll just need to confirm the contents of the receipt and edit if necessary. We did this using Cloud Functions and Google's Vision API, which automatically extracted text from the uploaded image. So what are we going to do today? Well. We launched our MVP to the world and have now built this new OCR feature. We want to make sure the feature is stable, bug-free, and works correctly before we release it to all of our users so that our users have a smooth experience and don't see a buggy feature or app. To do so, we're going to use feature flags, which is a process used to enable or disable functionality remotely without deploying code. Feature flags are important for a few reasons. We'll want to use feature flagging because we want to make sure the OCR feature is hidden from our users, as we definitely don't want to serve them a half-baked UI, which will probably confuse them and ultimately ruin the user experience. Once we're done developing our feature and are ready to release it, we can gradually roll the feature out to users, and we want to gradually do so just in case any unforeseen issues occur. If problems do arise, we want to immediately roll back the feature so our users are no longer being negatively impacted. With the help of Firebase Remote Config and Analytics, we can implement feature flagging and check how our users are experiencing the app while the feature is being rolled out to mitigate any issues. What is Remote Config? Well, as the name suggests, it enables you to remotely configure your app whether you want to change the functionality of your app, the UI, or some user experience. What this actually means is that you can fine tune your app behavior with conditions that you predefine without asking your users to download a new version. This sounds pretty useful as a mobile developer, but as we're building a web app here, you might be thinking, well, I don't really need to ask users to download a new version since every time they open the website, they'll see the newest version already. So what's in it for me? Great question. Remote Config also has targeting capabilities, so you can customize and personalize your app with analytics-based targeting, meaning you can choose types of users to serve some experience. For example, if you're building a web game, you can use Remote Config to adjust game difficulty or number of lives for different player levels behind the scenes to keep the game challenging. Remote Config works by storing key value pairs in the cloud. And for every key, you give a value based on the type of user. The key is what to use in the app code. And after setting up the corresponding values per user type, Remote Config will serve the correct value to the user. You can use these key value pairs in many ways. But today, I'll show you how to utilize them for feature flagging. Before we get into it, we'll have to do some project and code setup, also to make sure the app is working and running before we do anything. Let's clone the GitHub repo, which is linked in the description. Even if you came from the first or second video, you should clone the repo because I have changed the code to already include the feature flag. After you do so, we'll also need a Firebase project. If you don't already have a Firebase project from the video series so far, feel free to follow the link in the description on how to do so. If you already do have a project, please go to Firebase Console, copy your project configuration by going to Project Settings, and paste that into the Firebase config variable in Firebase.js. Next, copy the storage bucket URL 
and open storage.js to set the bucket underscore URL variable as what you just copied. This is going to make sure we upload images to the correct storage bucket for your project. We'll also have to do one more step in Firebase console, which is to upgrade to the Blaze plan if you haven't already, as this code uses Firebase functions. And you can follow the link in the description to upgrade your plan. After doing all of that, let's do npm install on the command line to install all of the dependencies. Let's then go into our functions folder and npm install everything there as well. While it's doing that, we can run Firebase login, which will have us login via the browser. Choose the appropriate email address, the one with which you created your Firebase project, and allow Firebase CLI to access your Google account. Upon success, the UI will reflect that, and so will the command line. Next, let's deploy the function we have in our functions folder by doing Firebase deploy dash dash only functions. And this might take a moment. Let's wait for it to finish. After it does, we can then run the app using npm run dev and open the web app just to check that everything is working. All right, so now we're set up to add a feature flag in remote config. Let's go to Firebase console to set up our key value pairs, which are known as parameters in remote config. And we'll create a new key value pair for our feature flag. The key will be the name of our parameter. Let's say OCR underscore feature underscore flag. And the value will be a Boolean, depending on whether we want to show the feature to the user or not. The default value is false, so our users don't initially see the feature. Now that we have the feature flag set up on the console, we can use it in our code. Let's open Firebase.js. And just like for all of the other Firebase products we've used so far, we'll first have to get an instance of remote config. Let's run the code using npm run dev and open the app. Hmm, there's an error here, a Firebase error saying remote config has an undefined window object and that the SDK only supports usage in a browser environment. This seems like an odd error. I'm getting remote config on the client side. So how is there an undefined window object? Well, turns out Next.js pre-renders every page, meaning it generates HTML for each page in advance instead of having it all done by client-side JavaScript. Pre-rendering this way can result in better performance and SEO. As for the SDK only supporting usage in a browser environment, remote config depends on browser APIs, so we need to determine whether the environment is running in has those APIs. So then you might wonder, why don't any of the other functions that get instances of Firebase services run into this issue? When Firebase was updated from version 8 to version 9 for web, the other products we've used here so far made sure to resolve this issue. To fix the problem, there is a function in remote config JavaScript SDK called is supported, which returns a promise resolving to true if a remote config instance can be initialized in the current environment and false if not. Let's use that and await the results. If it's true, then we can get the remote config instance by calling get remote config. We'll make all of this a function because otherwise we're using await on global scope and there's no guarantee on when the instance will be returned. As a function, we can await on the return value before doing anything else. This means that every time we want to use a remote config instance, we'll need to call this remote config function. Let's check the app again to make sure the error is gone. Yep, looks like it's fixed. Next, let's open remote config JS, which is where all the functionality related to remote config is going to be. You can see that there's already a constant for OCR feature flag, and it's set to false. This is because the code is written using this feature flag to guard the new OCR feature already. I didn't want to bore you with all the specific implementation details on where we need to use this feature flag in the code, although I will still briefly go over it later. Our end goal in this file is to get the value for the OCR feature flag parameter we added earlier on Firebase console. Before we do that, though, we'll have to do some setup. Let's write a function to do this, init remote config. First, we'll create a variable, rc, 
to store the results of calling the remote config function that we wrote earlier. We'll await the results and then check whether we have the remote config instance. If so, we can set the default value of parameters by doing remote.defaultConfig, which is a map of parameter names to corresponding served values. This is useful for ensuring the app behaves as intended before it connects to the remote config backend and so that default values are available if none are set on the backend. For the OCR feature flag, we'll reference it here by using the name of the parameter that we set in Firebase console earlier, OCR underscore feature underscore flag. We'll set the default value to false since we want the feature flag to be off, meaning our users cannot see the feature. As a side note, this default config can also be downloaded from Firebase console, which may be useful when you have a lot of parameters. That way, you don't have to type in every single one, and the values will be exactly what you've set in the console, hopefully minimizing human error. It'll be a JSON file that you can add to your project and reference from code instead of manually typing it. To actually get the parameter values from the remote config object, we'll need to fetch parameter values from the remote config backend, which we can do by calling fetch config. Any values that are set on the backend are fetched and cached in the remote config object. To make fetched parameter values available to the app, we can then call the activate method. Or to make code easier, there is a fetch and activate method that does both of these. With that, now we have the parameter value and can set the OCR feature flag value. To get the value, we'll call get value, where the first argument is the remote config instance and the second is the parameter name, OCR underscore feature underscore flag. Since we set this as a Boolean in Firebase console, we can use the as Boolean function to make it into a Boolean in our code. So now in the expense tracker, we have a feature flag. As I mentioned earlier, the code is already using this feature flag to hide the OCR feature from existing users. And I'll briefly go over where the flag is being used. I'll talk about UI changes first, then functionality changes. And this feature flag is used wherever there is a difference between the MVP and the OCR version. First, and perhaps the most obvious visual difference is the dashboard. In the OCR version, there are need confirmation and receipts, while in the MVP, there's only receipts. The feature flag is used in dashboard.js here to only display the confirmation receipts when the feature flag is true. Another difference is whether or not to show the input fields when adding an expense. In the MVP, we show the fields, and with OCR, we don't. In expense dialog.js, the part that shows all of these fields is here, and will only show the input fields when not OCR feature flag, aka the MVP. Next. In the OCR version, we decided not to let users edit the image, but in the MVP, we do. The code for this is right above, and we'll again want to show it for when the OCR feature flag is not enabled. Those are all of the UI changes. What about functionality? Well, there's this newly added is confirmed field for OCR that doesn't exist for the MVP. Behaviorally, when users receive OCR, all previously added receipts should show in the receipts section as they, in essence, have confirmed the information since they added it manually. These receipts will not have an is confirmed field in Firestore since the MVP did not have this field. Once they receive the OCR feature, any uploaded expenses will have a corresponding document in Firestore with either is confirmed as true or false. In other words, there are three document states with regards to is confirmed in Firestore. A document might be missing the field, have the value be true, or have the value as false. I've updated Firestore.js to take care of this. Instead of get receipts, there are now two functions here, get receipts MVP and get receipts OCR. The former returns all documents with a given UID, and since there's nothing about is confirmed, this is fine. The latter returns all documents with the given UID and the given is confirmed field, sort of. When the given is confirmed field is true, this means we have to get the confirmed receipts from the OCR version 
and the receipts that don't have an is confirmed field from the MVP version. Because Firestore works with indexing, we cannot query on null fields, so we can't query for documents that don't have an is confirmed field. So we'll query for all documents for the given UID, then add it to the returned receipts only if the is confirmed field is null or true. When the given is confirmed field is false, we just have to get the unconfirmed receipts from the OCR version because the MVP version doesn't have unconfirmed receipts. We can query for documents with the given UID and given is confirmed. All right, so now we have two get receipt functions, one for the MVP and one for the OCR version. You might be wondering, is it better to have two function, one for when the feature flag is on and one for when it's off, or just to have one function that takes in the feature flag and behaves accordingly? Having two functions is preferred because the code is easier to manage. If we end up not wanting the OCR version, then we could just delete get receipts OCR. Conversely, if we end up not wanting the MVP version, then just delete get receipts MVP. If we combined these two functions into one and took a feature flag as an argument, writing the code will be an entanglement and removing the feature flag will also be an entanglement. If we decide to try a third version, we'll have to continue adjusting the function. And the function now has a dependency on the feature flag, which isn't ideal. Okie dokes. So now that we have these functions, where are they actually used? Let's open dashboard.js and we have get and set receipts here that, well, as the name suggests, gets and sets receipts. If the feature flag is on, we'll set receipts to be confirmed and past receipts, which are ones that have been confirmed already. When the feature flag is off, we'll call get receipts MVP to set all receipts. Where we display these receipts, we'll have to decide which list to display. We get receipt rows here, and right now, if is confirmed is true, get receipt rows will just return two confirmed receipts. What if is confirmed is false? Well, that will depend on whether the feature flag is on. If it is on, we only want past receipts. And if it's off, we want all receipts. All right, so now we've taken care of this is confirmed field. A big question if you watch the other two videos is, for OCR, we're using cloud functions and the particular function we wrote gets triggered when an image gets added to storage. Won't the same function get triggered for the MVP version as well? Yes, yes it will. To mitigate this, we're going to change how we trigger the function. In the OCR version, we triggered the function whenever an image got uploaded to the default cloud storage bucket. Now, we're going to trigger the function using a HTTP callable function. Let's take a look at index.js in our functions folder. To write a HTTP callable function that we're naming process image, we'll use functions.https.onCall. The inside of this function is more or less the same as what we used in our OCR version, except for how we get the storage bucket and user ID. When we trigger the callable, we can optionally pass in data. So we'll pass in the bucket and user ID then. To get it, we'll do data.bucket here for the image bucket and data.uid here for the user ID. How do we call it? Let's open expense dialog.js. In handling submit, we'll call the callable function process image and we'll pass the image bucket and user ID as an object that we needed in that function. Here in the code, we can also see we're changing the code behavior based on the feature flag. If we're adding a receipt, we'll upload the image to storage. Then depending on whether the feature flag is on or off, we'll call the callable function process image for OCR or call the firestore.js add receipt function to add a receipt for the MVP. If we're not adding a receipt, then we'll check to see whether the OCR feature flag is off and there's a file name. Since the MVP version allows users to update the image, this is where we'll handle that. Then, regardless of whether the feature flag is on or off, we'll call the firestore.js function update receipt to update the fields in the proper document in Firestore. 
So those are all of the changes in the code that behave differently based on the feature flag. Awesome. So now let's get into the meatier parts of remote config. We have set up this feature flag in Firebase console earlier, and the current value is false. Let's open our app and make sure everything is working as intended. Let's log in. This part was unaffected by the feature flag. Upon logging in, our dashboard still shows the MVP version, meaning it just has one section with all receipts. If we click on the Add Expense button, we see the fields to input the information. Let's pick an image to upload, choose a date, then put in the location name, the address, the items we got as part of this expense, and how much it cost. When we hit Submit, the expense shows up here. Let's edit the expense, and we see that the button for uploading a new image is still here. Let's pick a new image, change some fields here, and then submit again. We see the updated image and expense. Great. Seems like this is working. We won't try delete since there were not any changes with respect to the feature flag for delete. And we also want a receipt from the MVP to test in the OCR version since the MVP version does not have an is confirmed field for this expense in Firestore. We want to make sure the behavior as such is still correct. To test that, let's go to Firebase console and change the flag to true. But wait, if we do that, won't all the users we have right now see the new feature? Yeah, they probably will. How do we get around that? More specifically, how do I, a person developing this app, test this feature behind a feature flag where the feature flag is true for me, but still false for everyone else? A lot of developers often ask about environments like dev, testing, staging, prod, and so on. We could consider using different Firebase projects for each environment. And in that case, we can change the feature flag parameter for our dev or testing project to true while leaving the one in prod as false. Alternatively, if you don't have separate projects for different environments or simply don't want to do the above, we can also use analytics to set a user property, which are attributes that can be set in the app, like whether or not a user is an internal user. Once we set a user property, we can then tell remote config to enable behavior for users that have particular values set. We can also use this to dog food internally once we have our feature implemented, just to make sure the user experience is smooth before we launch it to the outside world. So to set up a user property, we can go back to Firebase console and under analytics, there's this custom definitions where we can add new custom dimensions. We can click on create custom dimension and we'll call it is underscore internal underscore user. The scope is user and we'll call the user property is underscore internal underscore user. This user property we set here is what we're going to use in our code to set it. Let's hit save. We'll now need to use this in our code. Let's open Firebase.js and create an analytics constant with an instance of analytics. Analytics is going to have the same issue as remote config with the SDK not being supported. So just like for the remote config instance, we'll create an async function and await is supported for analytics, then get the instance of analytics. As a side note, because we've already used the is supported function for remote config, I renamed is supported for analytics to is supported analytics. All right, so where do we want to set the property that we just set up in Firebase console? That's probably going to depend on how we want to determine whether a user is an internal user. I'm going to say an internal user is one who has an email address that ends with andrewwu.com. If that's the case, then we probably want to set it in our auth file after the user has logged in so that we can check what the user's email address ends with. Let's open auth.js and in auth state changed, we can call set user properties, which takes in an instance of analytics and the second argument is an object 
containing the user properties we want to set. In this case, we'll use is underscore internal underscore user as the key, since that's what we named it in Firebase console. And we'll set the value based on whether the user's email ends with andrewwu.com. Since you, the person watching this video, probably don't have an email that ends with andrewwu.com, you can put in something here that your email does end with or write another expression here that works for you. User properties will not be recorded until an analytics event is logged. And in this case, there will be automatically logged analytics events. So we don't have to worry about that. Let's test this out to make sure analytics is actually logging. We'll open our web app and refresh the page. Presumably, the auth code ran and so user properties got set. We can confirm this in Firebase console to make sure user properties did indeed get logged. We can go to analytics in the navigation bar here, and we see here that there's dashboard and real time. In our case, since we newly added analytics and there are no other events being logged from our app, it's probably okay to view either one. The benefit of using real time is that if you just added a new event on top of already existing ones, you can see what happened in the last 30 minutes, as opposed to all the data from whenever you turn on analytics for your app, which is shown in the dashboard. All right, so let's check out real time. We can see here that some events got logged. And if we scroll down a bit, we see a box with users by user property. And our is internal user user property is logged here. Yay. So now we know our user property is working. Let's see how we can update our remote config parameter to turn on the feature flag for internal users. We'll go back to Firebase console and edit the OCR feature flag parameter. We'll add a new conditional value here, which essentially enables us to send a value to a targeted group. We can call this condition internal user. And for the condition, we can find user property and pick is internal user. We can select exactly matches and type in true for the value. We could also, in our code, decide to just pass the email as the user property and do the evaluation here. Either way works. So let's create this condition. And now we can decide what value to give users that satisfy this condition. We'll want to set it to true since we want the feature flag to be on for all users that are internal. Let's hit save and publish. Then let's see if our app is now the OCR version. We'll open our app again. And we see here that it does have the two sections for the OCR version. Yay. In addition, we see that the receipt that was added in the MVP version shows up here in the expenses section. This means that for expenses without an is confirmed field in Firestore, the behavior is correct. Now, let's make sure adding an expense here gives us the correct behavior too. We'll click on the Add Expense button, and we see the dialog only has a button to upload an image, which is correct. We'll upload an image, click Submit, and wait a few seconds before refreshing the page to see what happens. The new expense appears under needs confirmation, hence confirming that Firestore documents with false is confirmed fields still behave correctly. Let's click on the check mark button and confirm the receipt. Once we do that, it moves to the expenses section. All right, everything seems to be working as intended. Let's change the feature flag to false for internal users just to make sure we can see that too. We'll go back to remote config and change the parameter, choosing false for the internal users condition. Save, then publish, and then we'll go back to the app. Upon refreshing, the page isn't changing. Hmm, seems like the feature flag is still true for some reason. Why is that? Remember how in the setup of remote config and code, we use the fetch and activate method to get parameter values from the remote config backend and make these fetched parameter values available to the app. Turns out that the default and recommended production fetch interval for remote config is 12 hours, which means that configs won't be fetched from the backend more than once in a 12 hour window, regardless of how many fetch calls are actually made in that time. 
But as a developer needing to test this feature, surely we cannot wait 12 hours to test our new flag. Yep, I agree. Fortunately, we can temporarily add a property with a low minimum fetch interval, settings dot minimum fetch interval millis in our app. Let's go back to remote config.js and add that setting. We'll get our remote config instance and set the settings dot minimum fetch interval millis to zero so that it doesn't wait at all to fetch the values. Before we launch this feature though, we'll want to delete the setting. With that, let's try again in our app. Okay, we still see the MVP version. To make sure the minimum fetch interval is working, let's go back to remote config in Firebase console, edit the parameter, find our internal user's condition, and set that to true. If we go back to our app and refresh the page, we see it immediately update to the OCR version. Awesome. So we have confirmed that for internal users, we can switch the flag on and off, which is useful during development. Since our newly developed feature is working as intended and the feature flag is hiding the feature appropriately, it seems like we're now ready to roll out this feature to users. With remote config, we can do a percentage-based rollout meaning that we can start by exposing the feature to a small portion of the user base before releasing it to all users. This way, we can keep a close eye on metrics, support channels, and app store reviews to make sure that the launch is going smoothly. Let's return back to a remote config on Firebase console to do the rollout. We'll go back to our parameter and define a new condition called OCR feature rollout. This time, we'll pick user and random percentile, and we can first start with 5%. This means that for any user in our randomly chosen 5%, this condition will be true, and the users that get put into this bucket will stay there. Let's save this condition, which we can then see in our existing parameter. We'll set the value to true for that rollout. Update and publish changes, and just like that, this OCR feature was launched to 5% of users. Now, there's not really a way for me to show you this beyond saying that, so I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. So now that this OCR feature is out, we probably want to keep track of metrics to see whether there are any issues. We can set another user property for users who have been exposed to the feature in order to watch out for suboptimal app behavior like crashes or slow startup time as well as impact to other analytics events based on the fact that these users are exposed to the new feature. If we see these situations happening, this is likely an indication of a possible issue with the new feature, and rolling back the feature is probably a good next move. I'm not going to go through all the steps for this because the setup is essentially the same as before. In Firebase console, under analytics, we'd create a new custom dimensions and then set that user property in the code. To see the metrics for this, we'll go to Firebase console and under analytics, there's this dashboard page. It automatically shows metrics for all users, but we can add a comparison here for just users with the user property that we just set. Since I didn't actually add the new user property for users who are exposed to the feature, it doesn't actually show up here. But after you do and get some data, you'll see it here. Let's say that while looking at this dashboard, we realize the feature is causing a lot of app crashes, and we want to turn the feature off while a fix gets investigated. Let's go back to remote config and edit the parameter by setting the rollout condition value to false. Publish that change, and the feature is easily hidden, and users will no longer have to deal with the buggy state. Phew. Over some time, our development team debugs and fixes the code. We start rolling out again, first to 5%. As we observe usage of the feature and feel confident in rolling out to a larger audience, we can go to the Conditions tab, edit the OCR feature rollout, and increase that percentage. We'll ultimately reach 100%, meaning all our users can now see this feature, thus completing the launch. When we're confident that this feature is here to stay, we should do some cleanup in both remote config 
and analytics. For remote config, we can remove the flag from both the code and remote config of Firebase console, along with any conditions created for this parameter, as long as they're not still being used in other parameters. For custom definitions in analytics, we should archive the user properties used for this feature after they become obsolete, as we may run out of user properties quickly if we use one per feature. So there you have it. Thanks for joining me in feature flagging and seeing how to develop a new feature behind a feature flag, launch it to a small set of users, roll back quickly, and eventually launch to all users, all through using Firebase Remote Config and Analytics. I hope this was helpful. And see you next time, where we'll see how to send notifications using Firebase Cloud Messaging to remind users about confirming and submitting expenses. In the meantime, happy Firebasing. Thank you.